Okay. Okay. My name is Miriam Gross, Miriam Gutryman, and I grew up in New Haven, Connecticut. My parents were not religious. My father was a sole, so only a survivor of, a camp, of all the camps, only a survivor. My mother came from Yiddish parents, but um, we sent we were sent to first grade and and the public school. We lived in the area where there's a good public school. And all of a sudden, I think it was in 1963, there were riots in New Haven and riots in other places. And, and the Schwarzes were rioting. As soon as they started rioting, my mother said, that's it. You have to get out of the Jewish school. So they put us in the Jewish school. And Rabbi Hal checked out that everybody was properly Jewish. And my mother was properly Jewish. And then uh, her family was actually situated in New Haven, all the Jewish. So that wasn't a problem. My father was a lone survivor. But we went in as non from children. I went into second grade, my sister into first grade, my brother into kindergarten. And along the way, as I think like a year or two after that, my mother said, I just don't want to pay. I don't want to pay. I moved it. For some reason, she got this juke in that she didn't want to pay. It was too much. And I think it wasn't even so expensive, but she didn't come from a rich family. She didn't come from money at all. She just, I want to have my kids have the education for free. So Rabbi Hal had a problem, he didn't know what to do about it. So he went to the Babacher Rebbe and he asked the Babacher Rebbe, what should I do? There's three Jewish children and their mother doesn't want to pay. And like I said, I feel bad saying this about my mother because this is her hope that all this came through. And, and the Babacher Rebbe says, even if the mother doesn't want to pay, you take very good care of those children. That's what he was told to do. And I heard the rest of the story actually came out Years later, I didn't. I realized I got to be the valedictorian, the salutatorian, and all these, all these awards. We got so much attention. We were always invited in the afternoons on Shabbos. I would go from, from my house to the shul, and I would go to um, Goodman's house. You know Goodman, Sarah Goodman, Sarah Goodman Chazan is the Rebbe in Rome. Her parents would invite us to, for every afternoon, to come to her house. They would say, kept us so we would not do things that were not, we wouldn't go to town, we wouldn't go shopping, and they would wash over us a lot. And then we got involved, and then we got involved with NCSY and stuff like that. Meanwhile, we're learning all the halachs, and we're learning all the, all the things you need to learn. And, and, then, um, and then we got involved in NCSY, and we just said, that's it. We want to be kosher already, must speak. We know all halachos. And we did a turmoil in the house, and we didn't cash all that. We had ourselves a corner, we got ourselves pots and burners, and we had in a box, and we cooked for ourselves. And my mother was happy, you do your own food, okay, fine, we said it, go on. So that's what it was. We had our own pots, and that's how we, uh, all three of us, we turned kosher, she did whatever she wanted. And then I was still in, I went to Beis Khana. Beis Khana was the first school, when the first school was called Khana after the Babji Rebbe's mother, right? Base on it, and then they moved the school over to Orange, Connecticut. It was much nicer. And the same thing, I don't even know how much she even paid during all those years for all of us. But they treated, they, they really invested a lot into us. Rabbi, ha Rabbi Benjamin Katz, I mean Benjamin Katz was a rabbi. He was he was very close to us. He was very close to my sister also. When my sister was taking care of my um, my father, he was very very close with everything going on. Allah, uh, you had to ask a child, you asked to bend, Rabbi Benjamin Katz. He was there to recently, I don't know, whatever. But, okay, so then, um, and then after we got married, I said to myself, you know what? My mother didn't give any money. So I started taking my son money from my money and started giving the Hebrew Day School. I did, I did it for a while we were in America. After that, I stopped, but while we were in America, there's sort of money there. They are money, you don't return so much money. I just felt we had to, on our own, start paying back some people out there. So really, my sister and brother were not in the, uh, I was in the financial to do that, but I just felt that we really had, to, I stopped at the point, but I did actually, and the, how the story came out, and I found out all about the story, is that when one of my daughters was in Shluchim, so somebody went to check out, they got a psak, they had to check that there were really Jewish roots. So they asked, Ruth Zakatinsky, you know the name Zakatinsky? Ruth Zakatinsky, and she was the one that told the people who were checking out for Shulchan for my daughter this whole story. And I was astounded by it because I was surprised. This was 2003 I heard this story. I didn't know about this physically. I didn't know anything about this story until 2003. And 2003 I found out about it. 
And then I went, when we went to travel to America, I think in 2005, I went, met with Ruth, half, represented with half, and she said, yes, we took a very good care of you. We had a sock from the Rebbe that, that we had to take care of you. And I said, and I said, Baal Shem, you did a beautiful job. And look at us, we have Torahic families, we're all, you know, all from kids and marrying from people and everything else. So, and going to Cheder and everything, everything, you know, whatever, from. So I thanked her very much. We made a special trip to see Ruth Hecht in New Haven and thank her for being part of the, carrying out the part of the bracha that the, the Rebbe gave. The Rebbe gave, said, you take good care of them. And they did what the Rebbe said. And Baruch Hashem resulted in beautiful families.